Hi everyone, uh, I'm Dave McKenzie. I'm CTO of Crystal Delta. We're a software company all the way from Melbourne, Australia. And the first thing you might be wondering is this guy looks nothing like Nishant. Uh, and what happened to Nishant, who was meant to be speaking today? Uh, Nishant, um, his visa, Canadian visa, visa didn't come through. So unfortunately, he wasn't able to travel here today. Um, so at the very last minute, like yesterday, um, I said I'll step in and cover for him. Does anyone, has anyone worked with Nishant in the Open edX community or know who he is? Yes, you do. He's um, a very active contributor in the community and um, yeah, those that have dealt with him, they'll see that he works really hard in trying to help others and give back to the community. So he's really disappointed that he couldn't be here today. So the heading here, uh, Xenops, take flight is very appropriate. I, uh, it's particularly the words take flight. I uh, traveled all the way from Melbourne with my wife and two kids on the plane and uh, they're aged one and three. And uh, I can tell you that uh, flying 24 hours with two kids is a lot harder than building an online university. <laughs> and has anyone heard of Crystal Delta before or Xenops? Um, Yes, Crystal Delta, we're a software engineering company. Uh, we build software for clients in banking, fintech, property, but especially education industry. Um, we're passionate about education. Most of us have kids and we really want to see the best education for our kids. And that's really how we started the company and got involved in it. So education is where we spend a lot of our time. Um, and Xenops is... Uh, based on Open edX, and it's a product that we created uh, when we deployed um, to this university that we'll be speaking about today. Um, so we're going to be talking a lot about that today. So overview, uh, as I said, we're going to be talking a lot about the challenges of learning institutions and how Xenops digital learning platform powered by Open edX helps solve a lot of those issues that were being faced by big learning institution and in particular university. And it's built on a deep understanding of the student journey from right from the marketplace and course discovery and enrollments to registration, payment, uh, course delivery assessments, recognition, and also assisting in next path learning and recommendations for next steps. Um, and it can be deployed in line with the organization um, and capable to deliver value from day one. And it aligns very closely with the strategy of the organizations. So as I said, Xenops is powered by Open edX and with some customizations on top of that. And we're going to look at a case study where we deployed Xenops at RMIT or Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology. And we're also going to have a bit of a look at next steps. So if I was to sum up four things that made building a comprehensive online university a success, uh, the first thing, and these are going to be themes that run throughout the talk, uh, making complex things simple, uh, simple solutions to a learning institution um, who has very large and complex problems and using Open edX as the base. And there is no way that any we could have deployed what we did uh, without Open edX. I really understand the domain Crystal Delta is invested in the education industry and not simply just technology. We can do whatever, all sorts of things with technology, but it's the industry insight that create relevant uh, value for students and institutions. Uh, we also always focus on the student and the institution. The organizations come up with endless amounts of ideas, but then being able to pick which ones we focus on and deliver it in a feasible roadmap back to the client. Otherwise, you can get caught up on doing too many things. Uh, and we have an important theme at our company, uh, extreme ownership. Uh, we own a problem until it's solved. Um, we never give up until it is done. And we never pass the blame or the problem onto someone else. I want to work, first of all, I want to talk about the challenges of learning institutions. And there's a few key themes, learner experience and satisfaction 
and success around learner experience. I want to talk a bit about lifelong learning, which has been a big theme about the conference so far, uh, and profiling users and getting engagement from users and um, learners. And then how can we scale an organisation? Um, so they're the main things we're going to be talking about. So for learner experience and satisfaction and success, how do we use digital to create richer learning experiences that elevate the student journey and ensure satisfaction along the way with successful outcomes? And how do we measure this in a timely way? In Australia, we currently have uh, rely on a survey called the Student Experience Survey. Last year it was completed by 148,000 undergraduate students and 58,000 postgraduate students across universities and uh, non-university higher educations. Uh, it's intended to help both the higher education in institutions and also the government improve learning and teaching. And it reports on multiple facets of student experience. The survey is funded by the Australian government um, and administered by a research centre, the Social Research Centre. But any insights that are gained are often way too late. So it doesn't actually help out the students that are undertaking the, the survey. Um, there are indications that the, the indications that a student is struggling are only learnt way too late. Uh, it's common practice is to survey the students, which is inadequate and certainly uh, not really meaningful. Another challenge is that a student has to decide quite early on, maybe from the age of 15, uh, about what their career or chosen career path is going to be. Uh, and often this career decision is influenced by uh, parents or other outside factors. So then the student is then stuck maybe doing a degree for three, or six, three to six years that really, they're not really getting any feedback on whether this is the right thing for them. They just blindly go on and do the, the degree. Um, and it's a long time doing that three to six year degree before they're actually in the workforce in their chosen career and potentially earning income. Which what leads into lifelong learning. Currently, we have the anonymity of students who once they complete their study fall into uh, the bucket of anonymous alumni once they finish. When students leave, they seem to have no connection back to the institution they graduated from. They can't even log into any previous systems and they can't see any updated course content as it evolves and are basically lost to the university, never to be seen again. But with richer profiling of students, there is an active pool of participants who can be offered further education that is relevant to their qualification and interests at the right time in their career. The same profiling affords an opportunity to create a rich community with relevant engagement around learning activities and outcomes, supporting relevant and timely interaction between students, faculty, mentors, employers, and alumni. So the importance of a digital profile so that a learner can be better understood and become a member of a digital community. Most physical students experience anonymity before they are enrolled and then transition to alumni after a long course. There needs to be a more finely granular engaged form of learning activity delivery. For lifelong learning, there is no concept of alumni. There is always something new to learn. So using Open edX goal of continuous learning, as the learner progresses through their career, a student doesn't stop learning when they graduate. If we talk about scale, traditionally academic institutions have monolithic technology and physical campus constraints where they don't have enough seats or enough staff to teach, uh, so they can't scale the learners. So this is what we're talking about when we talk about a comprehensive university in considering all aspects of student experience as part of the education journey with the analytics and insights to understand and optimise and improve this experience in an operationally efficient way. So a comprehensive university is one that can scale, provide student satisfaction, student success and create a pathway for lifelong learning.
So Crystal Delta and, and Xenops, how does Xenops address these challenges? So as I said, built upon OpenEdX Foundation to become a full service digital learning management platform. And Xenops goes beyond isolated interactions to cohesively and comprehensively consider, enhance and support the granular and global issues of learner experience. It creates learner satisfaction and success and supports lifelong learning at scale. And what are the key features that a comprehensive online university requires? The first thing is obviously we need to attract enrollments into the course. So being able to have a marketplace where we can um, get students to discover the courses that are on offer and potential learners can then decide whether they can then enrol in the course. So discovering and then also enrolling in courses. Obviously payments, we, university or institution can't survive un unless there's payments. It'd be good if we could all do it out of goodwill, but unfortunately we need some way to pay it. So an online payment integration is required. We really wanna have a really rich user content experience and, and a really strong LMS and a really good way to create all the content as well. Our video and in, and a rich content experience, online content experience, is key to online learning. And also what we're seeing, um, not just with MOOC platform, but um, sort of the next evolution where universities meet MOOC platforms is assisted learning as well with mentors. So providing a platform that's easy for mentors to use, not just learners. Obviously, we need to be able to assess uh, students and on their progress and be able to grade them. And then give recognition uh, on what they've achieved, so certificates or a credential or badge or something like that. And since we're online and we're getting all this data, then analytics is a key part in how we can, we can get that information out and we can then do a lot more things with that information which we'll go into. And also it's gotta be accessible to as many people. Just like a building these days needs to be accessible to people like in a wheelchair or something like that. Uh, a site like this needs to be accessible to as many people as possible. Those people with disabilities or mobile platforms or people in remote areas. So how do we achieve satisfaction and success? If we have a really rich uh, learning designer tools with versioning and digital asset management, for rapid and rich content um, creation, then that's definitely gonna help. If we have uh, an enhanced profile so that we can then start to learn about the learners and then we can then um, do things based on that knowledge. So once we know who you are and understand more about you, we could match you to a chosen profession that may suit you more or offer a next course or then even adaptive learning we could offer you, you know, content in a way that suits your learning styles as well. Uh, advanced real-time behavioral and transactional insight and tools for proactive intervention. Um, you could predict when and identify when a student's at risk and then start to intervene and maybe put in particular measures to help that student. Um, and lifelong learning. So enhanced profiles. So if you consider a, somebody might start out, they might want to be a, a lawyer or they think they want to be a lawyer, but then they might change their mind. We want to be able to detect early on that they've changed their mind and then offer them um, courses that are more relevant to them as they progress through their life. So we want to constantly be monitoring the intent of the person and if that intent changes, be able to then offer them something that's more relevant. And of course, the solution has to be scalable. Um, it needs to be deployed on best of breed uh, technology that enables the scale, uh, the system to scale is the user volumes and data volume scale. Um, with automation and workflow, uh, a lot of business processes also need to scale. So we need to see where there's operational overhead and automate uh, those pain points as well. 
and also multi-modal uh, learning. Um, as much as a student would love to have a tutor dedicated to them 24-7, that's obviously practically impossible. So therefore, delivering a course via multimodal experience is essential. So offering like face-to-face, -face, a mix of face-to-face -face or video sessions or, or hangouts, as well as um, pre-recorded video, uh, as well as rich content, um, both online and offline resources as well in order to scale the learning delivery team. Obviously it has to be highly secure as well and single sign-on as well. So if you look at a case study, I'll give you, who's heard of RMIT University in Melbourne? Not many people, one. <laughs> Uh, I'll give you a little bit of background of RMIT because it's sort of relevant to what they did in this case where we deployed Open edX. Uh, RMIT uh, is located in Melbourne. I went there. Um, it's founded in 1887, so it's been around for about 130 years. Uh, it's got about 83,000 um, vocational and higher educational students. And it, its revenue is over a billion dollars, around a billion dollars US, so it's one of the most wealthiest universities in Melbourne or in Australia. It's rated five-star university by the Quat Quarrelly Simmons uh, ratings. And it's ranked 16th in the world for art and design. Um, and in the universities, the top 50 universities under the age of 50, it got its university status in 92. So it's ranked 16th in the top universities under 50 years old by the QS ranking. And by the Times Higher Education, it's in the top, it's 98th in the top uh, 150 unis. So, um, RMIT is quite a big university, as you can see. Um, and Apple were looking to partner with a university, and they could have chosen really any university in the world. And Apple chose to partner with RMIT to deliver a co branded um, training course on Swift iOS programming. Uh, if you don't know, do you know what Swift iOS programming is? Swift is the language that you code um, for Apple devices on, whether it's desktop or uh, mobile devices. Um, and they wanted to have uh, this campaign where everyone can code. Um, so anyone from novice coding, coders aspiring to be iOS developers, they wanted to not just offer what the free material is, but they wanted to have a co-branded with a large institution um, with their university lecturers and the content all co-created with the university um, and offer that course with a credential at the end. And they offered a program of, of five courses that you could take. So you could either buy it as a program, a bundled program, or you could take um, well, the first course really um, and then go through the courses. So um, they approached RMIT and they partnered together. Um, and the, uh, the learning designers created all the content in partnership with Apple. Um, they created a highly dependent learning model as well with multi-modal learning support where you have a course manager, course instructor, mentors, uh, obviously collaboration with the community and rich online content. And RMIT wanted to deploy this not as a SaaS model, but wanted to deploy that all on their own infrastructure, well, in the cloud, and integrate back to university systems. So this was all a vision. The only problem was they didn't have a platform to deliver this capability. And it was just six weeks until a high profile media campaign launch where the vice president of Apple um, Lisa Jackson, who reports to Tim Cook, the CEO, was coming to Australia to launch this platform in front of the live TV cameras and reporters. And with all the baggage of dealing with the university as well, which has got large complex systems already, this was gonna be very ambitious and uh, almost bordering on stupid. <laughs> and we were the bunnies that signed up to create and deliver the solution. Hmm. So what were some of the considerations along the way? 
So with all the things we've spoken about, the university wanted for this platform, with a six week timeline, we had to consider the business impact of every decision. What could be handled by the university now and what could be done later. So XenOps and Open edX offers a full suite of capability across the learner life cycle. And where, Zen, or where Open edX is going, it aligns exactly to where the university was going. So it was really a really good choice to implement Open edX. So we need to consider what was gonna deliver value from day one and get RMIT online up and running in a way that could be supported from day one, but then also scale and grow. We didn't wanna just deploy something that didn't work and fell over straight away and, or couldn't grow when the next courses and next volume of users started coming on. Um, so we had to create an implementation roadmap that was really targeted at providing value along the way so that we understood the university constraints and opportunities while making sure the underpinning technology was implemented in a robust and sustainable way that could support the longer term growth and ambitions of the university. So some things that we didn't go live with in day one was, or well, some things we did was integration with some of their marketing tools. Um, they really, because it was such a big campaign, they wanted to have integration with their marketing tools um, and conversion tracking when leads came through. But, seeing, but doing a full CRM for that sort of thing, we didn't um, implement day one a student support ticketing system. They have a student support team that deals with all the support issues with the custom, with the students. Um, we didn't implement the student support ticketing system from day one. That's something that could be done later. Uh, and a full CMS so that uh, cont content authoring of the marketing pages wasn't really a priority day one. And so these things came a bit later and that was okay. Um, Operational support. Um, so the MOOC uh, platform, it's sort of not really designed for handholding students through the learning cycle um, and assigning mentors and that sort of thing. So, um, and scaling some of those processes um, with things that evolved and came a bit later. Um, there's some things in the, the we thought about building from day one because we were going live with a program. But things are coming in, obviously, future versions of Open edX. So things like the program functionality and product bundling and partial refunds. These things are coming in Hawthorne release. So there are things that we could see on the Open edX roadmap that we didn't really need to implement from day one. And hopefully when the Hawthorne release comes, then we can switch to those sort of things. And then once we put in this shiny new platform, there was a lot of internal, um, all their internal teams like the learning design team, student experience team, course managers, finance team, and all their internal technology teams. They didn't know how to deal with a new platform like Open edX. So there was a lot of learning and teaching that we had to do to the university to get them up to speed with a new platform. So the solution was to commission uh, XenOps Open edX, edX and integrate university systems in order to deliver the Apple Swift uh, training course for the worldwide launch. It was a managed and hosted service. Um, we developed a bespoke uh, presentation layer for some of the areas uh, and configured the actual course creation whilst we were standing up the uh, platform. The actual course content was being developed in parallel. So the outcomes, it was six weeks from the day they wanted to go live to the, um, where they thought about the idea to the go live and when students were actually enrolling on the platform. And since then, we've had zero downtime, which has been amazing. And it really does speak volumes to the architecture of Open edX and how highly available and scalable that it is. And coming from a banking uh, working at a tier one bank when that was everything to them. And I was really surprised that an open source product was pretty much out of the box able to, to have all those things as well. Um, 
It is quite complex open edX for newcomers. I think we underestimated exactly how complex it was. Um, just to know all the parts that need configuring. And the community was really helpful. Um, we leaned on the community heavily to get help and they were really awesome in assisting us. Um, the second course that they went live with is, um, was blockchain and they partnered with Accenture and they were the first university in the world to offer blockchain as a course. And again, another big PR marketing campaign was around that and that course sold out just like the Apple course sold out in days. Uh, and now they're offering a new digital transformation um, set of courses as well. So yeah, the, the system had a lot of um, high media profile and a lot of users accessing the system, at, at least the marketing pages anyway. So the fact it didn't fall over was really awesome. Um, and what was also uh, quite funny was that the course creation um, took more time than it did to stand up the platform, which I thought was pretty good. And also the, um, the length of the course was longer than it took to stand up the platform as well. So yeah, it's pretty um, amazing how you can get up and running with an LMS so quickly. Yeah, this was uh, in the media. Um, yeah, there were hundreds of millions of people that the PR campaigns went out to and the media campaign launch. And these are just some of the publications where you could see it in. These were the blockchain ones and there were hundreds of places, uh, other media outlets that you could see it from. So what next? Uh, continue to help institutions recognize and realize the value of integrated digital learning experience management platforms with cross-functional processes and em empowering innovation. Uh, working with clients to develop bespoke implementation plans to create value from day one uh, and to feasibly realize the longer term benefits of the platform. Adjusting metrics and measurements to support learner journeys, not just touch points, and continue to develop XenOps aligned with Open edX community releases and contribute back to the Open edX community. And so in summing up what were the differentiators in uh, getting an online platform up and running in six weeks, uh, making complex things simple, focusing on the customer and the business first and delaying things that could be done later, uh, investing and in really understanding the domain in the sector and the extreme ownership philosophy in um, making sure you own the task and get things done. And so that's how we um, were able to spin up the environment for the customer and uh, now they're up and running and yeah, really enjoying the platform now and the customer experience and feedback has been really amazing from all the students. So that's it. <laughs>